you've already heard people on the channel talk about how it's important to play things around the drums with the same quality and the same intent as we do on one drum. So usually you can play with a certain amount of quality on one drum and then you have the around. What you do is you know you play with one on one drum, get a pretty good quality, and then try to apply that over here to the around. But sometimes the gap, just because of the nature of our instrument, can be pretty large, right? The around can be challenging or it can make you do things you wouldn't necessarily do on one drum. So it increases a lot of variables. Today we're going to talk about what's called slow fast patterns. And what slow fast patterns do is they attempt to bridge the gap of difficulty and try to give you a toolbox of being a little bit more X and Y independent, right? Horizontal and vertical independent in general. So when you do do the drum two to the around, it connects a little bit more easily for you. So slow fast was originally designed to be played slow and then fast, right? With maybe like you play, you play a round of eighth notes and then you play a round of triplets. But today we're going to talk more about how to overlay exercises on top of slow fast, right? To get to get a little more independence between the Y axis and the X axis. Step one, we got to learn what are the slow fast patterns. They're all numbers. So seven for the first slow fast pattern is about seven eight. Right? So if we slow it down, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That's why it's called seven. The next one we'll learn about today is called nine. So all nine does is it puts two Spock notes in between seven. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. So what it does is when you get to the other side of the drums, it's a mirror image coming back. And this way you have no pushes. You don't, you don't have like, you don't have any of those weird pushes. It's all flowing. The leading hand always leads, so to speak. The next one is called 13. And the next one is called 15, where we add two Spock notes to 13. So those are the four ones that are most useful, in my opinion, and the four ones we're going to talk about today. Step two, once you've learned what they are and you can play them, you want to pick an exercise and overlay that exercise on top of these slow fast patterns. Right, so my favorite one to start with is gallop. So I want to learn gallop on seven. So a couple tips to help you is to take it one bar at a time and continuously add a bar. So I'm just going to take the first bar and then I know where's the checkpoint? Where do I hit the drum? Okay, I'm hitting it on drum four. Okay, now I'm going to add a bar. Okay, then I end on the end of drum three. Make sure the motion feels comfortable, make sure I'm being accurate, make sure I'm going one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay. It's really hard to say it like that, right? So you do that and then eventually you get to the end of the exercise and boom, you can play it on seven. Step three is to apply that exercise to all of the slow fast patterns, all four of them, right? So you got it on seven, you got it on nine, you got it on 13, you got it on 15. And I'd recommend that same process. In another way, pretty soon you're not going to want to have to remember all, this, all the checkpoints right? for one particular exercise. You're just going to want to be able to move independently of the exercise. So sometimes you either think of putting autopilot on the motion, the x-axis horizontal motion, or sometimes you think about putting the y-axis, the exercise, on autopilot and being a little more meticulous about where you go. In the end, I think you'll need to do a little bit of both and maybe even switch up during an exercise just to make sure you can get it down pat, you can get it comfortable, and you can gain true independence. Step four, it's a little more advanced step. And that's why I like slow fast too. It, it caters to both you know, the beginning player and the advanced player. You can, it's so malleable, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Step four would be to do it with a two-heighted exercise.
So notice, even though it's a two-headed exercise, it's still always alternating. And that's the one rule of putting exercises on slow fast. They have to be alternating. That exercise was called seven strokes. And we're going to play it on seven. So adding those, adding those uh, two heights is going to make you want to play certain notes, want to make certain motions, and you kind of always have, you just have to resist that and learn to make it flow and make it truly independent. So once you could do that on all the other exercises, step five would be to play an exercise with a hand speed change, right? The hand speed still has to be alternating, but the hand speed can change, right? And that means if you have a faster hand speed, you're going to be moving X axis faster, and when you have the slower hand speed, you're going to be moving slower. It's still all congruent. A simple one is to take triplets to duple sixteenths. And we also have two heights as well. So we have two heights and rhythm changes. And for extra credit, do it all off the left. So doing slow fast off the left, you simply start on drum four instead of drum three. So seven off the left would look like this. we can add off the left, two heights, the rhythm changes. Cool, and there you have it. Let me know if you guys have any comments or questions just down in the comment section below. If you have any troubles with this, if you have any extra ideas that you think would be cool to um, incorporate into slow fast because the, like I said earlier, it's, it's such a malleable, um, exercise and idea and concept that you can really do a lot with it to increase your overall XY independence and get everything sounding just as good as you do on one drum.